Hey guys, Ethan Hamrick here with Wish Upon a Fish. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the best tips and tricks for catching big bass on chatterbaits. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so chatterbaits are one of the more versatile baits out there. Now if you don't know what a chatterbait is, let's talk about it for a minute. A chatterbait is, is basically, it's a, another name for it is a vibrating jig. Because it's essentially, it's a jig head with a hook and a skirt. And you can add a trailer if you want, but it's got this blade on the top of it up to, attached to the head that vibrates when brought through the water and that vibrating head or that vibrating blade on there is crucial in, in triggering these bites as, as you're fishing a chatterbait and you turn the reel handle that blade just chatters back and forth that vibration can draw fish from quite a long ways away they hear it and feel it in the water and are curious and come check it out and often strike the lure so that uh, that blade on there is a key to getting a lot of bites with this chatterbait you can uh, fish this chatterbait a lot of different ways slow roll it through grass fish it along the bottom use the yo-yo retrieve and work it off the bottom fish it fast th through grass or over the top of grass uh, skip it under docks and work it in and around docks uh, fish it around wood cover and fallen trees, rocks and riprap, anything like that. They're just a super versatile bait. Uh, one of my favorites to use for sure. Uh, the, the brand of chatterbait that I typically use is a Z-Man chatterbait. Z-Man makes a really good chatterbait. Uh, this is just the Z-Man original chatterbait. They also make a jackhammer chatterbait. The original chatterbait is less expensive and in my opinion it works just as good as the more expensive jackhammer. But I like a Z-Man original chatterbait. The hook is super sharp. You don't miss many fish uh, with a with a sharp Z-Man chatterbait hook. Uh, three three eighths and half ounce sizes are usually my go-to sizes, uh, no matter where I'm at or what I'm how I'm fishing. I use typically two different trailers. Well, one of two different trailers, either a 3.25 inch Strike King Rage Swimmer or a Strike King Rage Tail Crawl. Uh, I kind of vary that depending on. How I'm, how I'm gonna fish the bait. If I'm fishing slower or closer to the bottom, I'll typically use a crawl because it imitates crawfish better. If I'm fishing faster, closer to the surface and around grass and stuff, I'll fish a swim bait because it imitates shad and fling bait fish, bluegill, brim, anything like that, it imitates that better. So as far as color patterns go, I like to keep it pretty simple. In tannic or stained water, I like a black and blue or some sort of shade of blue because it shows up as a bigger profile in the water and those fish can see it better and pick up on it better. In clear water or cleaner water, I like some sort of green, green pumpkin, something like that because it looks more natural. And if there's shad present, if there's a shad spawn going on, if I can see the shad at the surface or anything like that, I'm gonna probably go to a white. Some sort of pearl white or shad looking white color uh, is the better option because it imitates those shad better than a green or blue. Now as far as the rod and reel combo that I use, I just use a simple 7 foot medium action rod, bait casting rod, paired to a bait casting reel with a 7 1 to 1 gear ratio. And I'll spool that reel with 20 pound braided line and then tie a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader to that braided line um, for increased sensitivity and um, it disguises the braided line that, that fluorocarbon does. So I feel like I get more bites that way. But just a, that's just a simple setup, seven foot rod, uh, pretty fast action reel, braided line to a fluorocarbon leader. And uh, that's my setup for chatterbait. Great, great setup for chatterbait, swim jigs, stuff, spinnerbait, stuff like that. Really versatile setup. And now guys, this weekend, I actually spent the weekend fishing a few places with my grandpa. We fished in some phosphate pits uh, near his house and actually fished the Winter Haven chain of lakes um, and all the fish we caught, all the fish that I caught this weekend came on a chatterbait. Actually came on a black and blue chatterbait. We're fishing stained water. Uh, it, pretty much every place we fish, fishing stained water. I just used a 3 8 ounce Z-Man chatterbait, black and blue Z-Man chatterbait, with a Strike King Rage swimmer on the back to catch just about every fish I caught this weekend. There's a lot of fallen trees in the pits that we were fishing. A lot of fallen trees and fallen wood cover uh, and a lot of fish came around that just slow rolling it and, and bumping it all over the tops of the trees there's submerged trees in the water and just bumping it over the tops of the trees and getting those reaction bites 
is how I cut a lot of the fish. And then I also caught some just in the grass. Throw it up in the grass, work it quickly through there and let it fall. Uh, that's also a way that I caught quite a few of those fish. But a chatterbait is just a super versatile bait. I mean, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite lures out there, no doubt. It's um, especially good in that in that tannic or stained water because of that vibration brought by the blade. It, it will work in clear water too. But I just like like it a lot in, in that stained or tannic water. All right, guys, I hope these tips on chatterbaits help you the next time you're out on the water bass fishing. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There will be a lot more cool and helpful fishing videos headed your way. We'll talk to you soon.